so tight for that photo and not wanting to let go. Yeah. It, it felt yeah. painful to let go. So, you know, life happens. I love that everyone in our life has played an important part of it. And I bless all of the past wives that leave had and I bless my past husband. I mean that they're all part of they're all who, part of the mixture of what makes us exactly who, who exactly yeah. yeah yeah well I think there's a big misconception in our society that a relationship has to last forever in order to be successful mm. and I believe meanwhile you know that's a cultural kind of idea that is not necessarily aligned with our soul's aim, which is growth <laughs> and expansion. <Yes. laughs> and so I believe we come together with this soul and it doesn't mean we can't spend a lifetime with someone, but it's really, you know, a reason season or lifetime, you know, kind of thing. And it's like, um, oftentimes it's okay. You get the medicine that you have for each other. You exchange that and a natural separation occurs so that growth can happen above and beyond elsewhere. And that's where our, I think our human gets attached and we don't want to let go. And then that's where things can, a lot of times I, th I think get ugly because it's shelf life has expired, if you will. And uh, we're <laughs> sort of attached. Yeah, I, I think you're absolutely right. And we are conditioned and programmed into what we think about our relationships and how we should behave, how we shouldn't behave, what we should do, what we shouldn't do. And I feel so blessed that my, my journey with Lee, it was filled with ups and downs, but I would always come back to my heart space and I would ask, you know, my heart, what do I do? Like, what, what, what do I do? You know, cry on, what am I, what are we doing here? What, what are we supposed to do? And I would always get this reassuring love, this message that nothing is as it seems and that you are dearly loved and to keep following what your heart guides you to do. And mm -hmm. I, I think it was, I think it was that advice that really helped settle my brain that was struggling with what it had been programmed with that never ever ever be with a married man it was just really hard for me because it was mm -hmm. violating my own moral compass yeah right. <laughs> right so again it's the journey of the heart the journey of the soul is what's important and if we can try and navigate it with not deliberately trying to cause pain to others, but still being true to yourself, I think is yeah. always important. Yeah. Agreed. Agreed. Well, I'd love to get an, a, some insight from you both regarding Cryon and who is Cryon? Where, you know, what the description that you uh, received, Lee, from both those intuitives. Uh, what, what, where, when, how it's crying <laughs> magnetic. You know, it like, what? Yeah. <laughs> it sounds like uh, captain zoom. Yeah. Right. Right. Arrived <laughs> from the, some spaceship far, far right, away. Right, right. And that's what I just really detested was all of that nonsense. Mm -hmm. It would uh, take us in that area. So I was very reluctant because who heard of an angelic presence with mm -hmm. a name like that? Mm -hmm. And what does ma uh, magnetic service mean? All of that really bothered me. This was all explained to me in a way that an engineer wants to hear mm. through the years. It's not important. What is important is who is crying. It's an, an, it's an angelic group. Mm. And this is the first thing I would like to tell people is that there is such a disconnect between us and the other side of the veil in reality. Mm -hmm. We are linear. We are, we expect one thing at a time at all. And when you cross the veil, whether it's channeling, whether it's in prayer, whether it's dreaming or whatever, you discover it's not that way. <laughs> it's the, often a composite of beings, right? Like you're saying, which is like a pattern I see over and over and over and over. It's usually like a collective. It is a collective. And, and what if, what if I said, that's the norm. When you get to the other side of the veil, what Krynas says is your soul is a collective. Now we don't want to hear that. It's a, you know, I look in the mirror, I see me. 
That's all I see. That's all I want to see. Thank you very much. And then we're told, well, your soul is beautiful and it's all, and you, you think, well, my soul belongs to me. And you say, well, yes, but also there are many other souls with you in your soul helping you. And then it gets really complex and you say, well, how does it work? And who's in charge? And all of the things that we do in a linear way. And the answer is none of that. It just is none of that. We are in a, um, what was it crying calls? A single digit dimensional puzzle which, you know, single digit dimensionality, where when you go to the other side of the veil, it's all dimensions. What do we know about multidimensionality? First of all, there's no time. Oh, boy. And this is something even the physicists are now saying, well, time is a construct. Einstein showed it. It doesn't really exist like we think it does. And then you get into all these esoteric ideas that, that makes your head spin. But it gives the idea that things are a lot different than you think. So Cryon has come into my life and said, I am an angel and not an angel like you think, because I'm not a woman. I don't wear white things and I don't have a halo and I don't have a name like an angel. So first of all, how do you describe and define an, an, something from the angelic realm? It's just pure love and it doesn't have a body and it doesn't have to have a body but it acts like a singular consciousness to me and it has to because when a human being starts to do any kind of channeling or anything like that one of the things that'll happen is i have a good friend who is a channeler i love to work with channelers <clears throat> and the, the the channeling is she channels multiple entities i get so jealous <laughs> because I've only got one. But this is way spirit says, okay, now you're open to a group, but this lets you do a group and feel good about it because they happen one at a time. And that's the linearity that, that, that we have. So all this to answer your question, crying is pure love. It's from the love source. Crying is about teaching us who we are and finding, peeling the onion and finding that perfect version of ourselves, which is the sacred one that we came in with. And Crying's message is always the same. Nobody told you this, but you were born magnificent. You were not born dirty, like so many tell you on the planet. You were born magnificent. Let's go from there. And so it's about self-discovery. And that has been Crying's message, one of them. The second one that was given in, in 89 in Crying Book One, actually 93 when it was written, was that the earth is going to shift. You're not going to have an Armageddon. Get ready. Hmm. By the way, that's where we are. Wow. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Interesting.